Welcome back everyone to another lesson in physics. And in this part two of practical electricity, we're going to look at electric energy and electric power, how to calculate these things, what they are. And also we're going to look at something that's called the kilowatt hour, which is another unit for energy. So all electrical appliances have power ratings and they can be found on the bodies of every appliance. So ratings like this one here, this is a power rating for this hair dryer. And here we have a power rating for this radio. So what do they mean and how are they measured? We will look at this in this topic. Now every appliance would have their respective values of current and potential difference or voltage. We can calculate the power rating of an appliance using the formula P is equal to IV. Or you can also use a different formula, and this is the formula that you have learned before. This is the formula of power is equal to energy over time. And if you remember from your year 9 topic for energy, work, and power, the SI unit for power is the watts, and it has a symbol of capital W. And here are a couple of more common units for power. The kilowatt, which is 1 kilowatt is equal to 1000 watts. Then you have the megawatt which is equal to 1 times 10 to the power of 6, or 1 million watts. So, like I said, P is equal to IV is a formula for electrical power. We can use this formula here, P is equal to IV, and V equal to IR, which is a formula for resistance, or the Ohm's law, to make another new formula, or another new equation. Now we're going to do a bit of algebra. So we're going to take this formula as equation 1 and we're going to take this second formula or second equation and this will be equation 2. Now to make a new formula out of these two formulas, I'll substitute equation 2 into equation 1. Okay, so this is a method called substitution. You probably have learned this when you are learning your additional maths. So equation 1 is P is equal to IV, then we substitute equation 2, which is V equal to IR, into P equal to IV. Now the V will become IR, and we'll expand the brackets, and we'll end up with this new formula where power is equal to current squared times R. Now we can make another formula by rearranging equation 2. So Equation 2, if you rearrange to make I the subject, so if we rearrange V equal to IR to make I the subject of the formula, so I is equal to V over R, and then let's call this equation 3, and then you substitute equation 3 into equation 1, so this is equation 1 here, so equation 3 will be substituted to I, and then the I becomes V over R, and then we expand this bracket and then we get p is equal to v square over r. So just by combining p equal to iv and different forms of v is equal to ir, we get two new formulas for power. p is equal to i square r and p is equal to v square r. Okay, and these are the two new formulas. This is useful for exams. If the question gives you current and voltage, then you can use this formula to find power. If the current only gives you the voltage and resistance, but not the current, you can use this formula here. And if the question gives you current and resistance, you can use this formula to find power. Okay, so depending what the question gives you, you can use either one of these three formulas to get to calculate power. Let's do an example. Example one reads, a flashlight bulb is connected to a 3 volts battery, so this is our voltage or potential difference, of negligible internal resistance. The emitter shows a reading of 0 0.7 amps. Calculate the electrical power used by the bulb. So here we are given the current and we are asked to find the electrical power. So what formula do we use here? We use P is equal to IV. So I is equal to 0 0.7, V is equal to 3, and you will get 2.1 watts. And that's the answer.
Example 1B, now you are given this type of circuit. You are given voltage and you are given resistance. You are asked to find the power generated by this circuit. So can you use P is equal to IV? No, you cannot because I, the current, is not given in this question. So you have to use one of the three formulas that you just learned now. The formula that you should use is P is equal to V squared over R because you are only given the voltage and also the resistance. So from this formula, then it's just a matter of simply substituting the numbers and then you will get 7.2 watts. All right, so that is electrical power. Now let's talk about electrical energy. How do we calculate electrical energy? So far, you know about these two equations, P is equal to IV. This is the formula that we use to calculate electrical power and P is equal to E over T or energy over time. This is the general formula for power that you learned back in year nine. Now we can use these two equations and use the substitution method to create another formula for energy, okay? So let's do that really quickly. So let's take this as equation one and let's take this as equation two. So what we're gonna do is substitute equation one into equation two, okay? Equation two is P is equal to E over T and we want to substitute P is equal to IV into this equation. So the P becomes IV. So that's the substitution from equation one and that will be equal to E over T. Now rearranging this, moving T to the other side, you will get IV times T is equal to E. Therefore, rearranging this formula a bit, making it a bit nicer, E is equal to VIT. And that's another formula for energy. And in fact, this is the formula that we use to calculate electrical energy from circuits. And just like what you learned from the previous topic, the unit for energy is the joules, and it has a symbol of capital J. Joules can be written down as, as kilojoules, and that means one kilojoule is 1,000 joules, and it can also be written down as megajoule, and one megajoule is one million joules. Let's do example two and see how this formula is used. The example reads, an electric ion with a heating element of resistance 60 ohm, so that is a resistance, is connected to the 240 volt mains. This is the voltage. Calculate the electric power produced in the heating element. Okay, first we got to calculate electrical power. Which formula do we use? Now, because we are only given V and R, that means when we want to calculate power, we use this equation here, P is equal to V squared over R. V is 240 volts and we square that, R is 60 and the power turns out to be 960 watts. That's the answer for the first question. Now we want to calculate number two, the amount of energy consumed when operating the iron for 20 minutes. What formula of energy do we use here? Now, because we already have a value for power and a value for time, we can use the generic formula for power, which is P is equal to E over T. Okay, so this is the formula that you learn from your UN9. So P is equal to 960. Energy is the unknown. Now, the time is 20 minutes. You have to change to seconds. So 20 minutes is equal to 1,200 seconds, and that is the value that we use for time. Rearranging this equation, E is equal to 960 times 1,200, and that is equal to 1,152,000 joules, and that is the answer. B, here's another example. A filament lamp rated as 60 watts, so that's power, 240 volts, so that's voltage, is connected to a power supply, find the current flowing through the lamp. So we want to find the current. So what formula can we use to do this? We can use P is equal to IV. Now P is 60 watts, I is the unknown, V is 240. Rearranging this formula, making I the subject of the formula, it'll be 60 divided by 240, and that is equal to 0.24 amps. And that's the answer for number one. Number two, we want to find the resistance of the filament. What equation do we use? There are different ways of doing this. You can use P is equal to V squared over R, 
or you can also use r is equal to v over i which is the formula for ohm's law or the resistance we're going to use this second formula here r is equal to v over i v is 240 i is we just found this out to be 0 0.24 and that is equal to sorry my bad it's not 0 0.24 it's should be 0 0.25 okay my bad so 240 divided by 0 0.25 that will give you 960 ohm. And then lastly, we want to find the energy produced by the lamp when it is switched on for eight hours. Again, there are two ways of doing this. You can use P is equal to E over T, or you can also use E is equal to VIT. We're gonna use the second formula. So we want to find energy. Voltage is 240. Current is 0 0.25. Time, it's eight hours, but hours have to be changed to seconds to its basic unit. So eight hours is 28,800 seconds. So let's put that in and calculate and you will get 1,728,000 joules. And that's the answer. Now let's move on and talk about electricity consumption at home. So how do we consume electricity at home? How do we and also the energy providers think of electrical energy at home? So have you wondered how the amount of electricity consumed by your household is calculated? The electricity meter is used to measure electricity consumption. So nowadays, the electric meter looks like this. You should have it probably lying around in your house. Now, these electricity meters measures energy not in joules. It measures energy in large units called kilowatt hours. So you can see here, this is my electricity meter at my house. And you can see at the moment, I have 1,320.09 kilowatt hours of energy left in my house. So kilowatt hour, so KWH, is another unit for energy and it's a large unit of energy. So let's learn about this new unit of energy. So like I said, kilowatt hours is the unit of energy that we use to measure energy in electric homes or in buildings. Now, usually you will have an electric meter. So how do you read an electric meter? That's the question. For example, if at the end of last month, the reading of your electricity meter is 93,000 kilowatt hours, and at the end of this month, it is now 93,735 kilowatt hours. This means that within this month, you have used up to 735 kilowatt hours of electrical energy. So this is relevant back when electric meters are a thing that you have to pay month by month. So nowadays, our electricity, we pay through prepaid cards. But back in the day, it's something that you have to pay monthly. And in order to pay electric bill monthly, you have to check your electric meter. And you do this by checking the difference or how much energy you have used compared to the previous month. Another name for the kilowatt hour is also the unit of energy. So sometimes we call it the kilowatt hour or sometimes we call it unit of electrical energy. Now, the prices for electrical energy consumption are based on how many units of energy that you have consumed with a certain time period. So this example will show you how electrical energy is calculated at homes and how we price electrical energy. So a 1.5 kilowatt electric heater, so this is the power of this electric heater, is used to heat a large container of water for two hours. Okay, so we have, this is our time. Calculate the energy used by the heater in joules. Okay, so we have power, we have time. We want to find energy. What formula can we use in this case? We will use the generic formula for energy. P is equal to energy over time. But first, because we want everything to be in joules, let's convert all the units into basic units or SI units. So the power is 1.5 kilowatts. So 1.5K, so that is equivalent to 1,500 Watt. And then the time is two hours, change it to seconds. And that is equal to 7,200 seconds. Let's do our calculation now, now that we have everything in basic units. The power is 1,500. The time is 7,200. Rearranging the formula, 
you will get this one. Then the final answer is 10,800,000 joules. Okay, now let's move on to question two. Now we want to find again the energy, but this time in kilowatt hour. All right, so I'll use a different color pen. We'll use the same formula, but because we want the unit to be in kilowatt hour, that means the power has to be in kilowatts, the time has to be in hours. But luckily, the question already gives us that. What's the power for this electric heater? It's 1.5 kilowatt. Energy is the one that we want to find. What's the time taken by this electric heater to be used? It's two hours, so we don't need to convert it to seconds. We just need it to be in hours. And then rearranging this formula, energy will be equal to 1.5 times two. So this energy is equal to three kilowatt hour. So there are two ways of showing electrical energy in homes or in buildings. You can show it in joules, and you have this very large number here, or you can show it in kilowatt hours and you only get a smaller number. And this is exactly the reason why we use kilowatt hours when it comes to describing electric energy at homes. Okay, electric energy at home, we use a lot of things at home uh, for a very long amount of time, and the value of energy that we use can be very large. Instead of using joules and having a very long number that is quite hard to see, we simplify it by using a different unit, in this case, the kilowatt hour. Instead, you will have a smaller number and that's nicer to see and it doesn't waste um, paper space, okay? So that's why we use kilowatt hours when we want to calculate electrical energy at home. Now let's move on to number three. If the cost for electrical energy is 18 cents per unit, okay, remember, one unit is basically one kilowatt hour. So calculate the cost of using the above heater for the two hour period. So one unit is equal to 18 cents, so $0.18. And how many units of energy is being used by this heater in this example? It's three kilowatts hour, so it's three unit. And how much does it cost to use three units of electrical energy. In this case, we just cross multiply. So 3 times 0 0.18, that is equal to 0 0.54 cents. So using the electric heater for two hours costs you about 50 cents. Right, so just to wrap up this video lesson and summarize everything, you learn about electric energy and electric power, how they are calculated and how they are reported for electrical consumption at homes. When it comes to electric power, we have the formula P is equal to IV, okay? And there are two different forms of this formula. P is equal to V square over R and P is equal to I square R, okay? And then we have a formula for electric energy and this is E is equal to VIT. And then you also learn about the kilowatt hour, which is another unit for energy that we use in order to describe the electrical energy at homes and at building. Okay, we also use this unit to calculate the cost of using electrical appliance. For the next video lesson, we're gonna look at part three and we're gonna look at the dangers of electricity.